That's what I'm afraid of. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a good boy. In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, all God's people said. Amen. All God's people said. Amen. Now, we're on the beach of the Holy Spirit for the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, the, the last night, somebody said we started too early. We're going to have the last night intense prayer for all of your prayer requests, especially. Okay? So we'll be praying over all of your prayer requests. Um, some of you, I've been praying by name as I go through your list. Those of you who have been sending me emails, I've been praying for your prayer requests. So how many know, turn to the person next to you, expect great things. Amen. Amen. How many are expecting great things? Um, expect answer to prayer. Expect answer to prayer. Amen. Amen. So um, the third day in the Divina, thou of all consolers, best visiting the troubled breast, best refreshing peace below. So we go now to the, the gift. Tonight is the gift of piety. Say amen. 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 The gift of piety began in our hearts with a filial of, of, uh, affection for God, who is our most loving father. It inspires us to love and respect for his sake, persons and things consecrated to him, as well as those who are vested with his authority. His blessed mother and the saints, the church and its visible head, our parents and superiors, our country and rulers. He who is filled with the gift of piety finds the practice of his religion, not a burdensome duty. How many love your faith? How many love your faith? But a delightful service. Whence there is love, there is no labor. Our prayer. Come, O blessed spirit of piety, possess my heart, enkindle therein such a love for God that I might find satisfaction only in his service and for his sake lovingly submit to all legitimate authority. Amen. Amen. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. Now, when the Bible was translated into Greek, and Isaiah chapter 6, verse 2, uh, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, are all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Jesus possessed the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Now, when you are raised from, from your new, getting into your new body, how many know you'll be filled with all the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Did you hear me? All the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, many of you operate in one or two right now, and praise God, but every one of us is going to be operating in the fullness of the Holy Spirit when you're called to glory. So now we say, in our Father, Hail Mary, and seven glory bees to our um, Lord. And then we will put our prayer request before the Lord, your special intention for this novena, the first novena of the New Testament. There's been a novena in the Old Testament. It's called Habakkuk chapter 2. The first novena is Habakkuk chapter 2, where he was in his tower praying for faith. So let's continue our novena. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Seven glory be, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was, As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, and now, and ever. World without Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, in the world without end. Amen. Now, everyone in this novena, put your special prayer request. And I lift up to you, Lord, all the hundreds and hundreds of um, prayer requests we got. We lift them up to you. And may your Holy Spirit touch each person physically, spiritually, and emotionally who we're praying for right now. Now, right now, everybody give to the Lord your special prayer request. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, it's a gentle breeze. And Father, we've been hearing a lot about distancing, but because of your Holy Spirit, we can never be distanced from you. We are drawn near because of the blood of the Lamb, because of the mantle of Our Lady of Sorrows. Draw us near, draw us near. And Lord, please grant and deign these special prayer requests of these special people. We've been broken emotionally and spiritually, physically. Now, Lord, give us joy in the morning. We're so thankful that in a very short time, our churches will be open again. May they never close. And Lord Jesus, just grant to bring all of our family to a saving knowledge of you, our sons and our daughters, our spouses. And Lord, open up the door of floodgate as we prepare for the Holy Spirit. Uh, next week, um, will be in a special services. And Lord Jesus, just flood us with the grace, the mercy, and the mystery. Give us the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Give us the flames of the Holy Spirit. Give us the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Give us the service of the Holy Spirit. Give us, Lord, the fortitude of the Holy Spirit. Give us, Lord God, the charisms of the Holy Spirit. Give us, Lord, that we always live in the Holy Spirit. Right now, before your throne, Lord, there's the Father on the center, and right next to the center, and also the center, is Lord Jesus, you are at the right hand. And so I'm going to ask you, Lord Jesus, to do us a favor, pray for us, because the Bible says you you forever are, will be alive to make sure you pray for us. So everybody say to the Lord Jesus in your heart, pray for me, Lord Jesus. And of course, we have all those great army of saints, our Holy Mother. And our, our Lady of the Holy Spirit, the spouse of the Holy Spirit, Mary, we ask you to intercede. You're our mother. And we ask you, who know the Holy Spirit better than any human being, to intercede that we know the Holy Spirit like you. Here's our prayer request. We bring them up to you right now. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Now we have an act of consecration to the Holy Spirit. An act of consecration to the Holy Spirit. On my knees before the great multitude of heavenly witnesses, I offer myself and my body to you, eternal Spirit of God. I adore the brightness of your purity, the unerring keenness of your justice, and the might of your love. You are strength and light on my soul. In you I live and move, and I desire never to grieve you by my unfaithfulness to grace. And I pray with all my heart to be kept from the smallest sin, no more venial sins in my life, Lord, against you. Mercifully guard my every thought and grant that I may always watch for your light and listen to your voice and follow your gracious inspirations. I cling to you and give myself to you and ask you by your compassion to watch over me in my weakness, holding the pierced feet of Jesus and looking at his five wounds and trusting his precious blood and adoring his open side and stricken heart. I implore you, adorable spirit, I helper of my infirmity, so to keep me in your grace that I may never sin against you. Give me grace, O Holy Spirit, spirit of the Father and of the Son, I say to you always and everywhere, speak, Lord, for your servant heareth. Now we're going to pray. Um, today we prayed a special emphasis on the spirit of piety. And so now we're going to pray that we receive all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 
And remember, brothers and sisters, I want you to have a vision of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They are the, they are the seven porches right now in front of the Merkabah of God. So I want you to see all these flames lit before the centerpiece of the Merkabah. When we call God El Elyon, which means God the greatest there is. God the, the great of the great. And so I want you to receive your prayer request because um, the book of um, Hebrews says that we have a high priest who we bring our petitions. And I want you to believe with me beyond a shadow of a doubt, your prayer request is heard. Now listen, your prayer request is answered. Listen, your prayer request is coming. And on Tuesday night, I'm going to show with you an amazing thing why you don't think your prayers are heard. They are. And the greatness of God will be revealed and your prayer requests are being heard. Okay. Now, the Holy Spirit has given us a prophetic word. I share with you. Oh, my people. Oh, my people. You've waited so long. And even doubt have crept in your mind, believing that I haven't heard you. I've heard you from the first moment you cry out to me. And I know you are saying when. I know you have said why. Very soon, very soon, I will show you the why. And you will see with joy on your face the answer to my prayer. Oh, my people, oh, my people, I will grant you the desires of your heart. Oh, my people, you have waited long enough. The time has come. I will answer your prayers according to the riches that I have. According to all the riches, your prayer is now being heard. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, who is ascending and into heaven, this is the prayer to the seven gifts of the Spirit, to Holy Work, the Holy Spirit, to finish your work in the souls of your apostles and disciples. Deign to grant the same Holy Spirit to me that he may perfect in my soul the work of your grace and your love. Grant me the spirit of wisdom. Everybody pray for wisdom. Holy Spirit, give me wisdom. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, give me wisdom. Holy Spirit, give me wisdom. Holy Spirit, give me wisdom. That I may despise the perishable things of the world and aspire only to the things that are eternal. Now we're going to pray for the spirit of understanding. Pray for the spirit of understanding. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. When we're, not, when we're not in the Holy Spirit, we try to figure things out. When we're in the Holy Spirit, the understanding is ours. Praise you, Jesus. Receive the gift of understanding. Receive the gift of understanding. Receive the Lord, I receive the spirit of understanding to enlighten my mind and with the light of your divine truth. Receive understanding. Receive the understanding. Receive now, brothers and sisters, the spirit of counsel. Receive the spirit of counsel. I receive the spirit of counsel that I may ever choose the surest way of pleasing God in gaining heaven. The surest way, the straight way, the narrow way. And that I will never be distracted, praise you, Jesus. I receive right now, I receive the spirit of counsel. Glory to your name, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to your holy name. We receive now the spirit of fortitude. I receive the spirit of fortitude that I may bear my cross with you. And I will overcome with courage all the obstacles that oppose my salvation. Receive now the spirit of um, fortitude. Receive with me the spirit of knowledge. I receive the spirit of knowledge that I may know God. By know myself and grow perfect in the science of the saints. Praise Jesus. 
the word science there means the knowledge of the saints, what, what they're doing, that we can live like a saint because we are redeemed sons and daughters. Praise to Jesus. Glory to you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We pray now for the spirit of piety, which is today's gift. Spirit of piety, that I may find the service of God sweet. Oh, it's so good to serve the Lord. And amiable, yes, come Lord. Give me that sweet spirit of service. Holy God, mighty God, immortal God. Thank you, God. Praise you. Now the spirit of fear of the Lord. And some people think that's bad, but no. It means that you and I are in awe of God. I'm in awe of you, Lord. I am in awe of you. So the spirit of fear that I may be filled with a loving reverence toward God and may dread in any way that I would ever displease him. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come, Lord. Holy Spirit, come. Take all that I am. Take all that I am. Take all that I am, Lord. Take all that I am. I will follow you. I will follow you. I will follow you, Lord. I will follow you. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. Kindle within us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and we shall be recreated, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and animate me in every way to the Holy Spirit. May I be a sign of being a true disciple in Jesus' name. Amen. And I know your prayers are heard and being answered. And at this end of the novena, the Lord will give you sweet delight. Because you are all take, everybody take a glass of glucose wine. It's called Holy Spirit wine. Everybody, uh, on, on the last day, we're going to lift up our, our glasses to the Lord and the, Shab the new Shabbat. And we're going to be filled with the wine of the Holy Spirit. And when we look outside, we're going to see a mountain. And that mountain is going to be flowing with the grapes of God's joy in the kingdom. Because he starts in Gethsemane with the grapes of crushed. And now we're getting the grapes of plenty. Amen. So receive the new grapes. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. All right, Brother Newton. You are now on YouTube, everybody. Yes, Father. All right, how's everybody doing? Okay. If you want to speak, you can unmute yourself. You can unmute yourself. Unmute, Father. Okay, let's finish. We got five minutes. Go. Sister Marie, what are you doing there? Maria, is he still with us? Yes. <laughs> I'm just focusing on the beautiful prayers we just prayed. Just see the beautiful, gorgeous. Well, here's some really good news. Um, you will never be shut out again. We now have access to 1,000 people. Ooh. Hallelujah. Oh, great. That's awesome. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Praise Brother the Mark, Lord. what are you doing there? Amen. Amen. All right, you're ready to go. Any questions from last night or the nights before? Maria, where's your cat? Amen. Jennifer, you okay? Yes. Glory to God. Thank you, Paul. Your daughter's okay? Yes. Everybody as well. Everybody's doing because good. Because we want to do a uh, kids Zoom too. Yeah, I know you were saying that. Now, two of my girls, you mentioned like an edge. Yeah, like Is an edge. Um, we want to do, um, I, want to get, I want to work with my great nephews and niece and try to get them involved in having a lot of fun in the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Okay, look, count us in. Somebody's working, somebody's walking behind you. 
Who's that walking me? Hello, that's Jade, and that's one. That's one of my. Hi. Come say hi. She's she's grilling right now. How are you? Hi, Ray. What are you afraid? <laughs> no, I'm grilling kebabs. You want one? Okay, I'm coming <laughs> over. Now, Jennifer, when the heck are you going to invite me over? Oh, you want to come over? Come over tomorrow. Come over with. Whenever you're ready, come over. See, I get free dinners. Yes, yes. We would love to have you. I would love to, any day. Come tomorrow, the, our Memorial Day, any day that you want, you tell me. I think I know All what right. you like. Already. Keep cooking, sister. <laughs> <laughs> and Jaden and I, we drove up to, um, we went to confession to um, Our Lady of Mount Carmel in Boonton. Um, today, uh, he has a... Um, Father Daniel has a, a shed outside. And the line was so long. It was beautiful to see everybody uh, going to confession. So just want to have with you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Take it, the, take it to the shed, I always say. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Norita. Yeah. Que tenemos. But Father, thank you so much for doing that prayer. Oh my gosh, it was fantastic. Oh. Say something, sister. We yes. went to the church. My prayers work. Yes, they do. Yeah. And I just got I just called President Trump. We're gonna blow those doors open. Blow it. <laughs> Amen. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Praise. we prayed all around the church. We put holy water, exercised water all around. We touched the uh, blessed sacrament. We were right there. Oh, and Rosa had a vision. She saw that the Lord with his crown, he was sitting on the throne and that he looked back and he said, do you really want me to open your churches? Oh my gosh, it was just so awesome. We heard what you said last night, we heard and we saw so many things in that moment. I, and this was a spur of the moment thing that we went to our church to do this. I don't know. It was just amazing. I'm still like in awe and in joy of what happened. I love it. I just don't want All right, to now get it. up with Marie and dance around the room. <laughs> <laughs> Father, oh, it reminds me what happened when uh, they had to check out a, a church, a very big cathedral, when Pope John Paul II was coming, and they had dogs sniffing. And when they came to the tabernacle, um, they stopped, and they thought they were smelling a person. And it yes, was in Baltimore rude. Sunday. Yes. The tabernacle. It was Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Yes. It was a true story. Amen. Amen. Now, Juanita, Juanita Amen. just joined us from the Philippines. Good morning. Here in the morning. Uh, she's on tomorrow already. And we're still working on today, whatever. So, Juanita, we welcome you from the Philippines. And um, we now have access to over 1,000 people to hear the word of God. So uh, tell all of our beloved uh, brothers and sisters from our great country in the Philippines to come and join us. Amen. So Juanita, you got homework. You know, we Filipinos have interesting names for people. Boy, do, deek, zeek, leek, beek, bop, boop, beek, bop, bop, bop. I asked one Filipino sister, sister, what is your name? She said, I'm Sister Bong Bong. <laughs> can, can you imagine hearing such things? So invite the whole world, and if you have more friends, invite them. And we've been averaging well over 100 people per night, praise God. And uh, well, a, a lot of nights were up to 125. Wow. So people are listening around the world now. We're in Canada, A. Eh? We're in the Philippines. Como esta acá? Mabuti. Sama sama tayo. Mahal din kita. Mahal ko kanya lahat. And then we're, we're going to hopefully, uh, um, we're going to go uh, be doing things in the Spanish language also and reaching the islands and into South America, into, um, we're, going, we're going global with the gospel. Amen. Are you excited yet? 
Yes. Amen. So, and so you're going to be part of a global outreach to do a Bible study line by line. So get excited. Correct. Amen. So everybody got your swords? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yep. Amen. Any questions? No. Any answers? This was it. And there is no laughing aloud, sister. Okay. <laughs> there she goes. She starts laughing already. Maria, Maria, are you enjoying this? Oh, very much. All right, everybody, Miss Ellen, you like acts? All right, church. Annadale? Annadale, New Jersey. Highbridge, New Jersey. And there's like 300 kids running around here. Um, their names are Ippity Boppity and Boo. And they're just running all over the place. And they eat three strings of spaghetti and then they down the chocolate cake. Very interesting household here. And they have a, they have a dog called Lucy. Lucy. But I'm still trying to give away two mean dogs. If anybody wants two mean dogs, I'll be more than happy to deposit them tonight in your, in your porch. Amen? All right, now, everybody go to Acts chapter 2. We're going to tell you about, oh, this is exciting, about 3,000 people coming into the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Now, let's open in, in prayer. And uh, this is being recorded. So um, you can get the session uh, tomorrow morning. That's how quick we are. we're getting sessions out to you. If you want the series, see where it says Mark Herbers down there? Kathy will package everything up for you. Um, one of the best sellers is the 12 Strongmen, which has gone all over the world. Kathy, sit down. Where the heck are you? All right, I got, you know, there, she's running all over the place, place there. Um, we welcome Greg uh, from uh, Winter Haven. Florida has just joined us. So um, everybody, open your Bibles to Acts chapter 2. And we are in verse number um, 41. 41. Every Acts chapter 2, Kathy, are you there? Verse 41. Okay, did you give Marcus salmon already? Or are you done with the salmon? Okay. And um, so we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. All God's people say, Father, I just praise you. I just glorify you. I just thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you that our churches were closed so we can understand how much we love you. And we need the Eucharist. We need the Holy Mass. We need the sacraments. And I just thank you that they're going to be opening up momentarily. And we're going to and thank you for our president. That the doors will be blown open. And may they never be shut again. And, and may there be great conversions because we've been locked up with one another. It's time to see the rainbow of life that God will promise never to allow destruction upon our mortal souls. And so come Holy Spirit, have your way, have your way. In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, all God's people say. Amen. 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 Everybody with me? Chapter 2. Verse 41, say amen if you're with me. Okay, now, first you got to save yourself, I'm in verse number 40, from this corrupt, gen crooked generation. Remember we told you what the word crooked means? Scoliosis. Scoliosis. Now name some people in the Bible who had scoliosis. Herod. He was so close. Now here's another little mini teaching. If you don't look up, you will miss your salvation. If you don't look up, you will miss the Holy Spirit. Look up. Jesus says to us in John chapter 14, when you lift high the cross, I will draw all people to myself. How many ever lift high the cross? Lift high the cross. Lift high the cross. You remember that? Give me that, Monique. Yes. All right, Monique just joined us. We have four or five people in this room. Just listen to the word here. 
So we have, uh, we're excited about, uh, uh, what did you say? She's very shy. John marries a shy person. Amen. So um, we have future priests here, so I got to be kind. All right, so everybody circle the word there. Crooked, everybody writing their scoliosis. Remember I showed you where scoliosis is and Luke, did Luke write both of these? Shake your hand, yes. Now remember this is written in Greek, even though you don't like it, sister, sister, sister. You don't like Greek, but it's, uh, you see the word scoliosis there, amen? Scoliosis means, spiritually speaking, you're always looking down. By the way, how many of you ever met people who are always down? How many always know people that, did you ever meet a person that looks at you and they can't look you in the eyes? Did you ever meet a person that kind of is checking out the ants in your carpet? Or the termites crawling up your window? You've never seen those people, but they never look at you. Because when I was in Wyoming, I got the answer. I was, my hostess said to me, the Indians, Father Bill, won't look at you if you have the Holy Spirit in you. Because they're living in darkness, especially alcoholism. And so what I did is I wanted to see if I had to check the Holy Spirit barometer. So I went up to them. I, I was in, checked this, we had kind of a fair out there. And they, it was right. They all just saw me. They ran away. I mean, I scare the hell out of some people when I just walk around. You know? So they couldn't even look at me. When you have the Holy Spirit in you, the enemy can't look upon you. Amen. And remember, the Holy Spirit prepares a path that nobody can walk on for you. Amen. You got it? If you have a path, and you do, in the Holy Spirit, he can't walk. Now, when you have the Holy Spirit, you've got to be engaged in four things if you want to stay very much in the power of the Holy Spirit. How many want to stay in the power of the Holy Spirit? Now, what happens here, this is really good. How many know you're getting good stuff? Turn to the person next to you and say, this is really good. Now, verse number 41. So they were received with the word. They were baptized. Now, remember um, where they were baptized? They were baptized at the bottom of the southern steps of the temple where Jesus fed. Now, you got to get this picture. Come on now. You got to get this. Jesus stood on the steps. You got to get this. And says, out of my belly shall have rivers of water. John 7, 37. Okay, you got that? John 7, 37. He was on the southern steps of the temple. The Jews went on the last day of Sukkah. Took gigantic bellies, hello, jars of water. Started pouring it down the steps. And all night long, they would go down to the pool of Siloam and get the water. And that's where there's a street they just discovered. So when we were in Israel, the street wasn't there. But it's there right now. So when we go back to Israel, guess what we're doing? We're walking up that street. And that street leads into the pool of Siloam, straight up to where Jesus was on the steps. How many are getting goosebumps all over the place? Now, when Peter preaches the first Pentecost sermon, Jesus is on the what? Steps. And you go straight down. He preaches the Pentecost sermon. He says, out of my belly shall come rivers of water. And that's where the mikvah is. M I K V E. And you know what's interesting, sister? Sister. Do you know what's interesting about that? Mary was in that mikvah too. Because she would have to go into a gigantic mikvah to go into the temple. So, what did St. Peter do with that mikvah? And the other 119, including Mama Mary. Hello. What did they do? They said, we want to be baptized now. Now watch this. This is so good. Are you getting good stuff? 
3,000 people. How many nations? 15. Who was else there at the end? Proselytes. What's a proselyte? Is a person, a person that can, a um, person that desires to leave. There's all pagan religions. Okay? Can everybody hear me? Okay? Desire pagan, lose pagan religions and want to become a Jew. That's a proselyte. I think today we call it R-C-I-A. So these are proselytes. And so now what happens is, look at verse 41. Everybody with me in verse 41? Just to give you all the background, I don't even think we'll get off of verse 41, but that's okay. May God give us more time. And there were added to them about 3,000 people. 3,000 people. Now, where does this go back to? Are you ready for this? Everybody ready to get the background of 3,000 people? So now, how did 3,000 people hear the word of God? Did you ever wonder that question? For example, how many people did Jesus preach to when he did this, the Sermon on the Mount? How many? Do you remember? He preached to. Are you ready for this? No. About 10, 11, 12, 13,000 people. Why do we say that? Because it says 5,000 men. And there in the context, it means males. And so we think then what happens is that wives, maybe not like this house. I mean, she would have, I mean, there would be 25,000 at least who would go to this house. And they had, the average size would have been four people. So do, do the math. Jesus had a whole lot more. Now, the question is, how did Jesus preach to 10,000 people? How can, how can I, uh, well, Jesus turned on Zoom, of course. That's how they did it. But how did they do it? They turned on, it formed a natural amphitheater on the Sermon on the Mount message. So anybody been with me to Sermon on the Mount? It formed a natural curvature that when you spoke in a normal voice, it echoed everywhere. So supernaturally, the Holy Spirit was forming an amphitheater. And the voice of God was going out. How many think that was a recreation? Now, I think all of us got to agree. In Matthew 5, in Matthew 6, and Matthew 7, when Jesus gave us those words, they were some powerful words that to this day, nobody could match the knowledge that Jesus gave us in just those three chapters. It's far beyond anybody. The knowledge, the spirit is far beyond what anybody could ever possibly say to us. Wow. Now, here's Peter at the bottom of the southern steps of the temple. Are you getting this, saints? And now, remember Jesus just was on the top? Now he's at the bottom What's flowing? The water. Pool of Siloam is down on the left. People are being saved. How many were there? 3,000. I was talking to a Jewish person. I said to him, how did the people hear? And he says, you've got to remember one thing he told me. When Jesus was up in the upper room in John 20, and he breathed on them the Holy Spirit, which is the second time in the Bible the breath of God appears. Genesis 2, 7, John chapter 20. Now here comes the third time that the breath of God blows upon the people. When the breath of God blows upon you, your ears begin to open. Amen. How many ever heard like a whistling in your ears? This is Holy Spirit tinnitus. Amen. When the Holy Spirit really, really comes in a powerful way. 
So I asked him, how do they do it? And what he said to me was this most amazing, a Jewish perspective. And he loved the Lord Jesus Christ. So you might have called, he wasn't a Catholic, you might have called him a Messianic Jew. Here's what he said to me. He said, Father Bill, you got to understand, when Jesus blew on them, he went like this. And Jesus, when he called upon the Holy Spirit, he did it in such a way that what happened was everybody who got the Holy Spirit was individualized by Jesus. Now, how many would like to have been in that upper room with Jesus on Easter Sunday and you got breathed upon? Now, I had the, I had the Benedictine nuns and they breathed upon my neck. I mean, I, 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 when it came right down here, when the nuns came upon me, boy, when you got the hot breath of the nuns, look out, baby. Look out. It was hot. But can you imagine the breath of Jesus Christ upon you? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Hello? Can't hear. Where do you see that? Oh, no, we're talking about. No, we're we're Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Hello? Are you back? Can you hear me? I know you're back now. Yeah. All right. I'm firing my technician tonight. All right. I, I am absolutely firing him. I mean, he's not getting his paycheck after this. All right. Where did I leave off that you heard, guys? Yes, we can hear you. Are you back? Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, I'm firing my technician tonight. Oh, this is a delay. This is YouTube. YouTube is a delay. Why is someone telling me this? Steady there. But um, right after you said the uh, uh, the two times that the uh, the 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 that God. Uh, blew upon the people at Pentecost. Yes. Right after that, you said a sentence and then we lost you. You lost me. Right. Let me push my button back. Okay. Um, the third time. Everybody can hear now? Yeah. The third time the breath comes is right here. Yeah. Wow. All right. This is the third breath of the, the uh, outpouring. Everybody getting this? Yes. Now, this Pentecost, you should get a breath on you. Oh, how beautiful. Now, what happens is this. I was talking to a Jewish, Jewish man, and I said, how did he, Peter, preach to all these people? Well, maybe the open, it was the wind that would blow the word of God into the ears of the people. I asked them, how did Jesus, Jesus pray over the, the disciples in the upper room? He said not to lose one breath, not even an air circle out of his mouth. He formed his hands around his mouth and he breathed the, the, the power of the breath coming out. How many like to have a breath coming upon you? Now, when Peter is preaching, 3,000 people, so the breath of God is going on. Now watch this. What happened is from 
the very get-go of the, um, the multiplication, from the very get-go, they were passing it one to another. Remember that we used to play telephone? When you have the breath of the Holy Spirit, it goes from one person to another person to another person to another person. How many would like to see that happen? Okay. Are we disappearing again? All right. Can anybody hear me? Yvette, can you hear me? Okay. It's not that I can hear you. Because we lost we lost visual with everybody. Yeah, Father, there's some there's some disturbance, so I had to do that so that they can hear you. So that this way there'll be no disturbance. We'll come back, they'll come back on in a little bit. Okay. This is good. Lord, save this this, this broadcast. So those who received the word were baptized, yeah. verse 41. And they were added that day about three thousand people. All right, let's go, let's go to the three thousand. Amen. Ready? To begin with the three thousand. Start in number one in Genesis 11. What happened in Genesis 11? They were building the Tower of Babel. Where is Babel? Babylon. How many ever heard of Babylon? Okay. So even in the name Babylon, you could hear the word Babel. The word Babel is Balalal. B A L A L. Everybody say Balal. Okay, that's kind of a. Now say that three times real fast. Balal, la, la, balal. And so you would sound like it's it's crazy languages together. So in chapter eleven of Genesis, they wanted to build a tower to knock off God. Again, I don't want to get political, but there's many people and governments in our country and governors who want to knock out God. Open the churches, amen. Open the doors, amen. Open the doors and blow it open. From Norita and Illinois, blow open the doors. We have a right to worship the Lord our God in this country, amen. Yeah. And, and no one's gonna take it away from us. So that's Genesis 11. When you look at the Catholic Church, when we do a real long vigil uh, of the Holy Spirit, the long vigil of the Holy Spirit always opens Genesis 11. Genesis, the 11th chapter. All right, now, part two. How do we get 3,000 people? What does it mean? In Exodus 32, the chosen people decided when Moses was up the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. On day number 39, they decide to build a golden calf called an egel. E-G-E-L. Ever say egel. So they had to build that golden calf and they started worshiping it. Because they remember back in Egypt, there were calves that the Egyptians worshipped. So being in close proximity, you begin to worship that which you see around you. So they worship that. So Moses was coming down the mountain on day 40. And as he's coming down the mountain, he takes the original Ten Commandments and smashes them to the ground. He turns it into powder and makes the people mix it. Talk about Ovaltine. This is not Ovaltine. This is, this is powdery substance from the Most High, the Ten Commandments, which God says, because you don't believe in my word, I will make sure it gets into you. Amen. For example, every one of us will be answerable to the words of God. You will get the word of God in you. All right, now turn to the person next to you. You will get the word of God in you. Amen. 
the word of God will come into you. Morality will be God's moral program once and for all. Do I hear amen? Do I hear amen? All right now, God said, how many people here? Moses went down, Exodus 32, drew a line in the sand. He drew a line in the sand and said, those who want to follow the Lord, our God, come over to this side. And what they were doing prior to this, they were eating and drinking unto the Egel, E-G-E-L. And all of a sudden, as the, the line is drawn across the sand, 3,000 people were on the other side. We're not coming. We're not coming to you. Okay. So how many want to see those 3,000 people come to the Lord? Now, how many know God has no failures? Amen. 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 God has no failures. And by the way, failures in your life are never fatal. How many ever blew it at least once? Well, cheer up. You're going to probably blow it about another 100 times. So cheer up. Amen. You're, you're not going to blow it to the point of losing it. Amen. Now, when he woke up, there was... 3,000 people on the other side. And what did they say? We're not coming. Whoa. What does God do? God says, I know no defeats. That's why we got to say from this day forward, the battle is the Lord. Does everybody say that with me? The battle is the Lord's. If you fight, you lose. If he fights, he always wins. God is one million, billion, zillion to zero. He never lost. Even though that was so treacherous, he got a group together, Moses did, and said, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to take a group here and give them ordination. The first group being ordained in the Bible are Levites. He ordains them. They get all excited. And then he puts a sword in all of their hands. And he says, guess what you got to do? Look at those 3,000. And you know what you do? Kill them. 3,000. People dropped dead right away. How many think that's a little scary? 3,000 people dropped dead. Now, it's been a long time coming. And guess what just happened? How many people are at Pentecost? 3,000 people. So what is the Holy Spirit doing? The Holy Spirit comes and takes out of 3,000 people from those 15 nations. Remember we did the 15 nations? He takes the death spirit out of them. And they said, what shall we do? And guess what? Now, here's what I want you to see. There's a line drawn in the sand. Those who want to follow God cross. And all of a sudden, what does St. Peter say? 3,000 people walk across the line. Who's on the other side of the line? 120 people. You got the picture? 3,000 over there, 120 over here. Uh, you got the picture? And now 3,000 people start walking across the line. Are you getting this? And who's in the middle of the 120? Mama Mary. Do you remember that? 
How many, how many would like to have been there then? Okay. And Mama Mary starts to, to welcome them in. Amen. And all of a sudden they said, what shall we do? The Holy Spirit comes upon them. And the same experience that they had in the upper room is now transformed right outside. In the book of memory, God ordained in Exodus 32, the Levites. How many were killed? 3,000. You got it? Now, how many people are crossing the line this time? 3,000. You got it? And so now they're crossing, and because who's pushing them? Now, I just discovered today in my study is in Hebrew, the word for blessed is barakah. How many ever heard that word? Mm -hmm. B-E-R-A-K-A-H, barakah. Now, barakah means, are you ready for this? Barakah also means, besides being blessed and happy, it means someone has pushed me. Someone has pushed me. How many ever felt in your life that someone just talked to you? That happened to me on uh, the grand total of two times I heard somebody talking to me and pushing to me. The first time was October 7th. And when I walked in my room, someone said to me, when I was a young pup, someone said to me in 1979, October 7th, um, I was really sad. I think Fulton Sheen was dying that time. So I was really sad. Someone said to me, October 7th, Our Lady of the Rosary says, I remember very clearly, in fact, I had to turn around my room. Someone said to me, if you're going to preach the word of God, you better know it. So I got my call from Almighty God right then that I had to study the Bible line by line. And in a very short time, I studied the entire Bible. And I had stacks of notes like this. And those old milk crates, I filled up a whole milk crate with all of my Bible notes. And I said, I can't believe what I'm learning. And I got to go to Middletown to get this out. Amen. I even got to go down to Alabama where they say, y'all, I have to get this out and get Tony out of the next door room and get him in here. And so I, I had to get them out and I had to get this word of God out. And someone said to me, and I'm looking around the room like, who's talking to me? And the word was this, you must know my word if you're going to preach it. That was 1979, so how many years ago that is that? 41 years ago, Woo. I was really a pup back then, amen? So, um, so brothers and sisters, this, 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 these are the times when the Holy Spirit pushed me. How many have ever felt like you've been pushed? So when you're blessed by God, you're pushed in the Spirit of God. Amen. How many have ever found yourself doing something you would not expect you would do? Now, Peter drew the line. Where's the line? Look at verse 41. Where's the line? Are you getting good stuff? Look at verse 40. Oh, the, second, the second time? Oh, you were really listening. Okay, the second time of the Holy Spirit. I, I, I feel like people are talking to me. Amen. So I, I, I'll be right with you on that point. Okay. Now, I just want to show you. The line that Peter draws in the sand. Everybody see in verse 40? Save yourself from this generation. See the line? Now, may I say it another way to you? This is not a good way to say it to you. Save yourself from the perversion of this life. Cross the line. Amen. How many were on that uh, other side? 100 and what? 20. 
now all of a sudden you got you got to get this we got to be there i i gotta uh, mel gibson should hire me for a film and i'll put my director hat on it and, and say over there get them over there get them this and all of a sudden you see three thousand people from the 15 nations crossing the line now watch this are you getting good stuff Tell me like pentecost and then all of a sudden they start taking their mouths like this and start breathing. When the breath comes, they could hear the whole voice. Here is oh, my people. Here is the line you must cross. Save yourself from this perverted generation. Save yourself from this corruption. When you cross the line, the breath of the Holy Spirit push them across the line. Then they become Baraka. What's Baraka? Blessed in Hebrew, or if you want to get Greek, Makarios. M A K A R I O S. Cross the line. And that's why. We have our interesting kids in the basement. And all of a sudden, they're not crossing the line. How many no, How many ever said, I want to push them? The pushing is the breath of the Holy Spirit. Now, another interesting thing happened with the 3,000. How many know we should have a movie called The 3,000? Amen? And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go, I'll, i, I got to be the director of this. So here comes now 3,000 people being pushed by the breath of the Holy Spirit to cross the line. Okay, now, another thing about the Levites. They get ordained. What was their first job of ordination? To kill somebody. Isn't that great? Happy ordination. I got from you a good sharp sword. Go get them, baby. How many have a few people you would like to? In Christian love, do I hear amen? amen? Everything you do is in Christian love. Now, it says to us here, there was only to them that day, 3,000. So how many people started the church? 3,120. Now, how do you know you have a Holy Spirit church? How many want a Holy Spirit church? You have a Holy Spirit church when you see your numbers increasing. That's why I'm laying hands on all of you right now. Because not to get into the num number game, but I want to see the increase of those crossing the line. Amen. Are you getting this? Cross the line, baby cakes. Cross the line. Now, here's how you stay across the the line. Look at verse number is no. Oh, then the other thing about the Levites. I mean, I'm giving you good stuff. Amen. Now, the other thing about the Levites, guess what they did because of the Levites? They started a book. What's the name of the book, everybody? Leviticus. If they did not kill these people, these 3,000. There would be no book of Leviticus. Now look at the word Leviticus. What do you see in there? Levites. Do you see it? Now, many of you don't say to me, oh, please give us a, I've never had anybody say, please, I beg you, give us a Bible study on Leviticus. Not one of you said that. Now, one of you said to me, you know, I was reading Leviticus last night. It's so good. Not one of you said that to me. Ever. But by the way, there's some sections of them that are really great. But you got to get the background to understand what's going on. Amen. Are you getting this? Now, I want to share with you verse 42. Everybody got the 3,000? Interesting, isn't it? Everybody understand the 3,000? It's really deep, isn't it? Now, 3,000 is megafold. 
So now the church has just increased megaphone. Now, what happened to them? Faith in Jesus Christ, repentance. What else happened to them? They went through the baptism. They went into the mikvah. They got baptized. Baptized, not just the mikvah. So the mikvah changed in front of the Jews. Remember, the mikvah was your washing to get into the temple. Remember, Jesus is on the southern stairs. And there's the temple right in front of the second temple. And where is Peter preaching all of this? He's preaching it right in front of the first temple. Where it was. Somebody say, whoa, this is good. Now, you, you got to see all this action. When you get baptized, what do we say when you get baptized? You're welcome to the other sacraments of the church. Eucharist and confirmation. Are you getting this? So the Levites then wrote a book. And guess what? What's the first chapters? They're all about the offerings that you have to give to God. Now, are you ready for this? When you're in the Levite, how many think you're really following God? Now, I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to give you knockout set, sentences right now. You ready? Knockout sentence number one: God never wants second place. If you're following God. He will never receive what you give him secondly. You have to give him first. Amen. You must give him first. He doesn't receive from you second. Amen. He wants first. Can I give you an example? Say you earned $100 and you know you should die, right? And you put like, I'm going to pay my gas bill. I'm going to pay my mortgage, everything down. And the last one is your tithe. And guess what he says? I don't want it. Because what did you do? You put him last. How many ever heard of Cain and Abel? Do you remember Cain and Abel? Yeah. Genesis 4. Why was God accepting Abel and not Cain? When you read very carefully Genesis 4, what did Cain do? He just picked out something for God. God says, I don't want it. What did Abel do? I give you the first of the flock. Do you see the difference? Mm -hmm. Now, it's like it's Christmas Day. You all come to my house and I'm going to give you a present. And I say, oh, what should I give you? And I just pick it out and give it to you. Maybe you might be a little insulted. Well, did you think about me and my likes and dislikes? And uh, did you wrap it up for me? So guess what? You might say inside you, I don't think I want it. I mean, look how he just gave it to me. That's what we do to God. If we're going to have the Holy Spirit in us, God can never take second place from you. I only want the Holy Spirit. <coughs> the Holy Spirit can only come upon you when you cross the line, when you get the blessings of God to move across. Now, does this make sense? Some of you are really getting good stuff tonight. Now, verse number 42. And they stead now, how many would really like now listen, you gotta do this if you want to grow in the spirit. I forgot what I drink there. <laughs> Here you go, dear. Okay, now. There's four things you got to do to have the Holy Spirit continuously operative in your life. Where's your notebook, sister? Well, you get one. Who is your father? Him. Oh. Amen. Now, I'm trying to teach the little ones to start taking notes. Now, the four things that have to be operative when you cross the line in the Spirit. Can I ask you a serious question? Don't answer me, because I already know the answer. Are you doing this every week? These following four things. Are you ready? When you cross the line and get baptized, now, number one, verse 42, and, and they steadfastly to the apostles' teaching and fellowship to the breaking of the bread and to the prayers. All right, number one, what we need to do is stick 
the apostolic teaching. Number one, that means apostolic. How many know what you're getting right now? Apostolic teaching. So if you're going to cross the line and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you need to stick to apostolic teaching. Now that is um, that is for us the word of God. And we got the word of God. I apologize to you a million and first time. I am so sorry that you didn't get this growing up. But I praise God that you beautiful people are saying yes to it right now. Amen. So number one, there must be in your life, I would say weekly, and you're doing a good job, apostolic teaching. Now, the Catholic Church believes the word of God and also you should be studying the, the lives of the great saints, like St. Joseph Copertino. You remember him? He likes, she likes, Miss Kathy likes uh, St. Joseph Copertino. He levitated 70 times. I mean, come on, get, get into some fun, okay? So we need to understand the teachings of our church, you know, do you? Amen? Because you should know the teachings of your faith. Do you know them very, very well? Amen? I was watching a Protestant evangelical attack the Catholic Church. Oh, they do this, they do that. Of course he was wrong because he didn't know what we teach. I went, oy, oy, oy. Now the second thing, if you're going to get into the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you're going to cross the line and see the breath come upon you, I believe the Holy Spirit wants to give you a breath. In fact, I believe the Holy Spirit is going to give you a literal breath. Amen? That, that the Lord wants to see you with a literal breath. Number two, is um, fellowship. All right, now, that means koinonia. Everybody know how to spell that? K-O-I-N-O-N-I-A. It's never the role of Father Bill to be up there on the altar and far away from you. How many felt that years ago? Is up there, God, it's my role to be up on the altar and then come down and be with you. Amen. And let me tell you something. Fellowship with you is beautiful. Why? What do I want to do when I'm with you? That's why some of you never invited me for lunch. Why? Because what do I want to talk about? What we have in common. Koinonia means what we have in common. Amen. So when I'm here with Brother John and Monique, what names they give these women? Monique. What, what, what do we share? We share what we have in common. We didn't talk about the Yankees, though that would have been a great thing to talk about. They didn't once mention the Yankees to me. Not <coughs> once. So we had to only share what we had in common. And it was great. Amen? Do I hear amen? So number two, koinonia. It's a Greek word meaning common. Number three, how many are passing the Holy Spirit test? Now, this must be a weekly occurrence. Amen? That's why this lockup is nonsense. And the doctors are finally agreeing with me. They said, even Dr. Fauci, we can do more irrevocable harm by locking us up because we have not built, you heard that, um, herd immunity. We need to be with one another. Amen. This is ridiculous. When I become Pope, heads are going to roll. Amen. Number three. The third thing that he says there is apostolic teaching, koinonia, the breaking of the bread. Everybody underline the breaking of the bread. This is the first call of explaining the Eucharist. This is the first time the Eucharist is called in the early church, the breaking of the bread. Let us break bread together on our knees, on our knees. Let us break, thank you, choir, break together on our knees, on our knees. 
So there's going to be a breaking of the bread. Amen. So now, how many know? Does anybody go to mass here? Does anybody know when the breaking of the bread happens? The breaking of the bread happens after the host is lifted in the air. Do you remember that? Brought down, and then all of a sudden, after we sing the Lamb of God, and by the way, you know why we sing the Lamb of God? Because the Lamb is the animal in the Bible for sacrifice. And you, you read, now watch this, I'm giving you good stuff. I'm giving more FYI. And then it says you got to redeem the donkey. Come, what do you mean redeem the donkey? Because the lamb is for the sacrifice. And because we've been kind of unclean, the donkey is for redeeming. The lamb is for the sacrifice. The donkey becomes for, that's in Exodus 13, if you want to read that. And the, the donkey becomes for us, because we've all been unclean, our redemption. And when we were in Israel, the very week we left Israel, what did the Jews do? They believed that the Messiah is coming. And what did they do? Redeem the donkey. What does that mean? They prayed over the donkey. You can't imagine this. Imagine going to St. Matthew's tomorrow and praying over a donkey. And Maria will be there cleaning up, you know, Maria likes doing all those things. And so, and get Joseph to help out too. He pops in on the side with his white car and everything else. And can you imagine redeeming a donkey? So redeeming the donkey means unclean, and God will take what's unclean and make it redeemable. So when you look at Exodus 13, uh, you have number one, I'm unclean. I need the donkey to be redeemed. Number two, I need to be saved. So I have the lamb who is sacrificed. Somebody say, well, I got this good stuff. Now, the breaking of the bread happens after we say lamb of God. And by the way, just for your FYI, the priest should not take the host and break it in the middle of the air before you. How many know that's called sloppy agape? You know why he shouldn't break the hose? You ever see that? They lift high the hose and they break it in front of you on the, in the air. What happens to the sacred crumbs? You know, I go nuts when they do that one. So that's why you've got to bow down. And when you break it, then it's in the, uh, the patent and no crumbs will be spun up in the air. Amen. Have you ever seen that? You know what I'm talking about? That's terrible. Amen. It should be reverently broken in the patent. Amen. So what's the next thing we should do? There should be the breaking of the bread. Whoa. Now, an interesting thing happened to on Pentecost. Pentecost started in a brand new way in the church daily prayer. It got it together with the Jews who always had their daily prayer. Does everybody pray every day? You should be praying. Uh, I, I, are you praying your 12 year novena for your kids? Amen. Your novena to St. Bridget? Okay. Are you praying before the Blessed Sacrament? The kids are saying yes here. That's good. Uh, it, it's, are you going to confession once a month? You're trying. That's the answer I got here. Try. Who is your father? He's a deacon. Oh, save us, Lord. Save us, Lord. Now, the fourth thing is the daily prayer life. Now, watch this. Let me let me let me show you something. Is this exciting? If you connect the end of Luke 24, go with me to Luke 24. Do, do you think do you think we'll be off these two verses? Aren't they worth it? Are you getting a lot of information? Do you like background, sister? Sister. 
Sister, are you getting, did you like crossing the line? Now look at Luke 24. Let me show you something what they did. Do you think they got hit with any cost? I think so. Now go to Luke 24. Who wrote Luke 24? How come you're so smart? All right, now look at the verse 52. Luke 24, verse 52. Remember, originally, Luke 24, verse 52. Amen? Now, how many remember that Luke and Acts were one what? Book. Everybody remember that? Now, let me show you something really good. Turn to first section. This is really good. Okay. Melissa, this is really good. I'm going to shout it down. Shout it down to that one. Oh, my. Now, look at verse number 52. Do you know after Jesus ascended? Look at verse number um, 51. He went into heaven. Does everybody remember that? Where did Jesus ascend? Brother Joseph, do you remember? Um, Maria, I remember you saying, where did he say? He ascended to a Mount of Olives. All right. I saw Deacon Tim, he, he sent out a, a little post on the Facebooking, and they showed the old site where it didn't happen there. It happened where the caves with all those our fathers were. Remember, we walked in out of those caves. That's the, right above that cave was where the um, the second coming um, will also come. And that's where the mountain is going to start to split. Zechariah 14. Zechariah 14. There's going to be a tremendous earthquake. And things are really going to start to split. By the way, you haven't seen anything yet of what's coming. So blow those church doors open and get in real quick. Now look at verse 52. Everybody with me? And so Jesus went up into heaven. What did they do as soon as after Jesus went into heaven? This is the novena of the Holy Spirit. Put in there verse 52. Novena to the Holy Spirit. Are you getting this? And they worshipped him. Somebody say, whoa, this is good. Now, this is the first time all the apostles worship the Lord together. So what happened when Jesus ascended? What do you think they did? I think they fell on their face. Now, remember the transfiguration? How many people fell on their face? Three of them. Now, here comes the 11, because we got to wait. Um, we got to, during this time, who's coming in? Matthias. Remember Matthias? Now he's going to be there at Pentecost. He's going to be there at Pentecost with the Virgin Mary. Remember, 120. Are you getting this? And then look at verse number 52. They worshipped him. Underline that. They worshipped him. What happened on Easter Sunday? They're still trying to figure it out. So here's 50 days later. What does Pentecost have you to do? Pentecost helps you to worship God. When you call upon the Holy Spirit, you've got to worship. Worship God. Amen. Are you getting this, Josephine? You've got to worship God. Amen. Are you worshiping? Now, now watch this. That wasn't my point, but that's a good point. They're on Mount Zion. Everybody know where Mount Zion? That is not... Um, they got across into, they went back and forth. Look at they, they returned to Jerusalem. So they're on Mount Olivet. Then they run down to Jerusalem. They worship the Lord. They go into the temple. What do they do inside the temple? Do you think the Jews are going to go nuts? Are they Jewish? Yes. How many know when you get too exuberant about your faith, people think you're nuts? we got to be like everybody else. And that's why they think I'm nuts. They return to Jerusalem with great joy. Now, returning to Jerusalem means they're on Mount Olives, 
and they walk 2,500 feet, go down on the mountain, like the Palm Sunday Path. Are you getting this? Go up the mountain. Are you getting this? They return to Jerusalem. What do they do? They start with mega joy. What happens when the Holy Spirit comes? What do they do? He's alive. 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 Amen. They even start singing in Italian. Amen. Can you hear the Italian going? Jesus está vivo. Jesus. Can you hear the Spanish going? They're all tuta, tuta, tuta. Are you getting this? They come down the mountain, Mount Olivet. Remember the Palm Sunday path. They walk the Palm Sunday path. With joy after Jesus ascends, they go back down, they walk in the temple area, and they start getting excited. Amen. Can you, how many can see the Blessed Mother rejoicing too? Sister, 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 can you see the Blessed Mother rejoicing? Amen. And by the way, sister, there's only one depiction of Mary smiling in all of Israel. How many have ever seen that? That's a picture one in Bethlehem. It's the only time Mary is smiling. Interesting, isn't it? So now they can mega joy. And he's alive. He just went, oh my heavens. And now look what happened. And they were continuing. Underline there, verse 53. What a great way to end the gospel of Luke. And they were continually in the temple. What are they doing? Blessing God, you see it now. What did I just tell you about blessing? Did we learn one new thing tonight? Shake your hand, yes. When they're in the temple blessing God, what happens? When they started blessing God, they were being pushed, 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 pushed. Now, let me show you something. How many would like to give God permission to push you? How many want to give me permission to kick you? In Christian love. Now, I kick, God pushes. Amen? Are you getting the difference? Amen? Now, let me show you what it means of what happened to them. Are you getting good stuff? Someone say, I'm getting good stuff. Getting good stuff. Brother John, are you getting good stuff? Getting good stuff Brother are you sure? Amen. Is Monique getting good stuff? She's interesting, Monique. John, how have you been married so long? Now, if you go with me, let me show you how to really get. Let me show you what happened to them. I, I, I want you to get this. Do you think you're getting this? Are you saints? Yeah. Uh, Kathy, are you getting this? You're still eating there. They come and they eat. They eat cookies on me. You should see what I see. They, they eat nuts and everything else there. And now, when you go into the power of the Holy Spirit, you, you come in the power. Um, uh, in in verse, let's say First Corinthians, First Corinthians, chapter nine. First Corinthians chapter nine. I want to show you what happened to them. Amen. Are you with me? All right. I'm going down to verse number. I can't. Uh, verse thirteen. First Corinthians nine thirteen. Do you not know that those who are employed in the temple service get their food from the temple? And those who serve at the altar share in the sacrificial offerings. So what are they doing? I want to share in the sacrificial offering. Remember, if you don't give it first, God can't receive it. God cannot receive if you give him a second. And he says, in, this, um, in the same way, the Lord commanded those who proclaim the gospel 
should get their living by it. So guess what happens? Because I'm so, just put in there the impulse of the Holy Spirit. When I have the impulse of the Holy Spirit, everything's going to happen to me to glorify God. I must what? I must what? Preach the gospel. Do you remember that? Now, uh, how many want to preach the gospel? Are, are you getting this? And um, he says there, look at verse 20, chapter 1 Corinthians 9, verse 23. I do it all for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. Anytime you share the gospel, you're impulsed by the spirit. You can never share the gospel. Oh, I guess I got to do this. When you have an impulse of the Holy Spirit, you will share in all the, the gospel. Do I hear amen? Now, um, so what do I do here? I, I've got to preach the gospel free of charge. Do, do I charge anybody for what I do? In my entire life, guess what? I've never asked for money. And guess what? I'm a rich man. I got plenty of it. Amen. I light my stogies with $20 bills. I think I'm even up lighting my stogie with $100 bills sometimes. But so, so, so that's the impulse of the Holy Spirit. I move. I see the blessings falling. I live in the blessings. And Jesus says life abundantly. I share it with you. I can't stop talking about Jesus. So that's the blessed mother, the joy she had. That's the 119. And that's what happened on Pentecost Sunday. They were so filled with that joy. We just have to do this. We just we are impulsed by the Holy Spirit. This is called in First Corinthians two, the implosion on your life and the explosion of His life. You have to be imploded before you're exploded. Amen. Would everybody write that down? God implode me to explode me. You got to be imploded to exploded. You got it. I'm I'm making up my own words. So are you enjoying my own words? I don't know what I'm saying either. So just so here comes the implosion of the Holy Spirit, but we need we need an explosion of the Holy Spirit. Do I hear Amen? Amen. Now he says to us, uh, look at chapter nine, verse number um, sixteen, chapter nine of Corinthians, verse sixteen. Um, for if I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. So when Jesus ascended, what happened to them? I got to preach. I got to tell people. So what did they do? Can you picture sister? Hey, sister, sister, can you picture Mary doing this throughout Jerusalem? Can you picture Mary? How many like have the Blessed Virgin Mary dancing throughout the streets of Jerusalem? Can you imagine? Oof. I mean, you know how she, you know how old she was back then. So she started at thirty-three, and she was about sixteen. So Mary's a forty-nine-year-old woman dancing throughout uh, Jerusalem. Can you imagine just doing the tarantella in Italian? Can you see her glorify Jesus tutta la vita sempre Gesù? Can you see? Can you see what the apostles were doing? Now, look, remember we just studied in Luke? They're going back and forth, back and forth. So they went to the upper room. Now, watch this. They left where the ascension was, Mount of Olives. They go through Jerusalem in the temple area. Are you getting this? You got to get this. Are you alive? They start the Novena. Where do they go for the Novena? They go to the upper room. So guess what? Back, here's the upper room. Go to the temple to pray, back and forth, back and forth. Can you just see that from the upper room? Remember, we're all in the upper room. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. What are they praying? Come, Holy Spirit. They were doing the novena. Hallelujah. And when they're doing the novena, finally, bum, 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 he comes. He comes with this flame. And it comes like that loud wind. Are you getting it? And all of a sudden, it was so loud afterwards that something phenomenal happened. 
they ran out and then Peter goes down at the bottom of Zion where Jesus was on the southern steps and he breaks loose. Save yourself from this generation. And all of a sudden, the line is drawn and 3,000 people rush across that line from 15 nations and say, that's us. And when we studied, it was north, east, south, and west. When we studied Pentecost, guess what happened? I could just see them, all different walks of life, people from all the nations saying, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want Jesus. What does it mean to be saved? What does this mean and how do I get it? So those two questions were answered. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. And I can't wait for Catholics to say to me, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I'm running out of breath. He says to us, if I do not do this on my own, I have a reward. But of my own will, I'm entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, verse 18. I make the gospel, here it is, free of charge. Not making full use of the right of the gospel, which means I can get anything I want if I really serve. And guess what? It's free. You know what the greatest joy of the gospel for me is? To share it. To share it. And guess what I want to do with the rest of my life? Only this. Only this. I want this joy for me. This is my Pentecost. Can you understand, precious people? That's why I get so excited about the Holy Spirit. When I travel around, you know what people say to me? Father Bill, just do one thing. Give us a talk on the Holy Spirit. Now back with me just to kind of introduce the next section. We didn't get, I think we only did like three verses. Was it worth it, sister, brother? Sister? Sister. Did you get this? Did you get all the connections? All right, a lot of information tonight, just two verses, amen. So praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now back with me to Acts. We're going to cover next time, what does it mean to live with other believers in the Lord? When you have the Holy Spirit, you can't stop doing it. And so guess how many kids you have? One, two, Three, four, five, and more are coming. Six, seven, eight. I mean, you just share the word of God. And do they drive you nuts? Yes. The lady here says her restaurant is open 24 7. <laughs> it's just a non stop restaurant. Amen. So, did you get good stuff? Myra, did you get good stuff? Amen. Praise Jesus, Sister Ray. Did you get good stuff? Cheryl, you get good stuff? Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. So let's pray. I want to keep going. Um, but next, uh, next, next time we'll pick up, still on Pentecost, and by the time next this Pentecost rolls, you studied the whole whole thing of Pentecost. Amen. You got incredible background. I hope it's meaningful for you. I hope it's life changing. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. All God's people said, Father, we thank you for Pentecost as we prepare for Pentecost 2020. It's going to be a different Pentecost. We're breaking out and breaking out. Breaking up is hard to do, but we're breaking out because we break up to break out and we're going to break out in the spirit of the living God with the Virgin Mary leading us to rejoice always in the Lord. Again, we say rejoice. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners.